uh, dear, dear colleagues, academics and students, uh, I would like to welcome you all and especially I would like to welcome Professor Dr. J.D. Agarwal on behalf of our Dean as well. To, today we are Today, we are honored to host Professor Dr. J.D. Agarwal to deliver the opening academic lecture for our faculty. Our acting dean, Professor Dr. Chanu Balser, could not be with us since she has to attend the academic opening ceremony of the university, but she sent her best regards to all and wishes the new academic year to be fruitful on all grounds. And today we are hosting uh, Professor Dr. J.D. Agarwal. She, uh, and we are honored that he has accepted our invite to, be, to give the opening lecture. Uh, let me first uh, give some information about Professor J.D. Agarwal. Uh, his topic today is business education is the key to success, happiness, and to be wealthy. And Professor Agarwal presently is the Professor of Finance and the Founder, Chairman, Director of Indian Institute of Finance and Chief Editor of Finance India. He is a leading economist and financial expert. In the past, he has taught at Sri Ram College of Commerce, University of Delhi, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, Ahmadu Bello University, Nigeria, and Cleveland State University, USA. He has written over 15 books, edited over 100 volumes of Finance India, published more than 125 research papers, authored more than 32 book reviews, 500 case studies, and working papers. He has been supervisor of several PhDs, MTech dissertations, NBA and MSc dissertations, and research projects by senior government officials sponsored by GOI on study leave at IIF. He has lectured in more than 500 MDPs and trained more than 10,000 senior executives from government and industry delivered more than 600 radio, TV talks, interviews on economic issues. He has organized and participated in more than 1,000 seminars and conferences world over, either as a keynote speaker, chairman of the sessions, or as a participant. He has also assisted more than 100 institutes, universities, organizations globally as an expert. Invited to address conferences, sign MOUs, and deliver lectures in more than 50 countries. His research, writings, speeches, talks, and interviews on AIR and TV have had an important hearing on government policies, including change in the budget timing from 5 p.m. to 4 noon. His students hold have held ministerial positions in government of India, state governments, politics, judiciary, bureaucracy, legal, media, accounting, economics, business, and industry. World Bank and senior positions in academics as professors and deans internationally. He has contributed significantly to promote the field of finance in the last over three and a half decades through education and research. One of his most important contributions is to found the prestigious Indian Institute of Finance in 1987 without the government aid. The Institute has become a center of excellence and a base for scholarship in the last 23 years. Indian Institute of Finance Library has over 55,000 volumes and more than 1,000 technical journals. It is unique and solely devoted to develop the field of financial economics, the financial economics which was relatively unknown, 
got a boost and attained a place of prominence, shifting the focus of economics from welfare orientation, state subsidies, high taxes and controls to financial economics, market orientation and wealth generation. His contribution, another contribution of his, is to start and develop a quarterly journal of finance, Finance India, at international level to promote research in finance. The journal started in 1987, is considered to be a leading journal of finance and has been rated third best worldwide by American Statistical Association. It has on its editorial board some of the most prominent experts from all over the world, including Nobel laureates Franco Modigliani, late Merton Miller, Robert Merton, Robert Mondel, and Douglas North. He has single-handedly, with the support of the editorial board, edited more than 93 volumes. Each issue is of about 400 pages. Dr. Agarwal is an original thinker and has practical bias. Professor Agarwal's research indicate that theories and techniques of financial economics based on postulation of single objective give erroneous and irrational results and have become outdated in the present era. Keeping in view this, he has developed several new models and theories in the field of financial economics. His models have presented a new perspective to the theory of finance. Some of his works include goal programming model for capital budgeting decisions with priority structuring, stochastic goal programming model for capital budgeting decisions under risk and uncertainty, lexicographic ranking of multiple goals, fuzzy goal programming model for capital budgeting decisions, goal programming model for working capital for business firms. His works are cited widely internationally. He has won several citations and awards and quoted widely in national dailies. He is on the editorial board of several international journals and his current research interests are in the area of corporate finance, investment, public finance and international finance. Now, I give the floor to Professor Dr. J.D. Agarwal to give his lecture on business education is the key to success, happiness, and to be wealthy. The floor is yours, sir. Professor? Professor, the floor is yours. Professor Agarwal. Thank you, Dr. Doruk. It's a matter of pleasure for me to be invited to address an opening academic lecture in the Faculty of Business of DE University of Turkey. I understand and I have learned that this is one of the very famous universities in Turkey and is very well known. <clears throat> It's a matter of great happiness that you and Dr. Yonor Balasar have organized this lecture. <clears throat> I'm glad that it is like the internationalization of your faculty by inviting people from outside Turkey to address students, faculty, and deliver 
an academic uh, opening lecture. <clears throat> My lecture, as you know, is on business education, stating that it is a key to success. It is also a key to happiness. It's the key to generating wealth, to be rich. I think this is what everybody around the world wants, to be rich. Everybody wants to be happy and everybody wants to be wealthy and also have a good social standing. Your students, as well as your faculty, set in high that to be rich and healthy. As you know, business education aims one mind to think, which is something really very important is to think, to learn from the experiences of leading CEOs, industries, entrepreneurs, and businessmen battle of learning experience besides what is being taught at the school by professors in terms of planning, organizing, coordinating, controlling and various principles of management in behavioral aspects. I think uh, in Harvard University where the case for studies were introduced and then followed by many other countries or schools of business, I think that was one way of learning from the experiences of others. How various companies started, how they grew, how they tried to manage their organizations, how, to en how did they enrich themselves, how did they spread wings around the world, the multinational corporations, transnationalations and how did they really manage such aspects rising from small entrepreneurs or small entrepreneurship to spreading their wings around the world. There are a large number of multinational corporations. There are a large number of banks who are operating beyond the boundaries of their own countries. There are billions of dollars worth of wealth they have generated and their turnover also runs in billions of dollars. All that probably is a matter of learning experience. That learning experience cannot come just like that. It has to come through studies, from professors, from books, from research papers, from articles. And I think that is something which is very important and business education provides that opportunity to brain, train one's brain. It provides an opportunity to train one, one's mind in planning small organizations, medium-sized organizations, and large organizations. Without planning, it does not work. I think that is something. Then how do we organize? Organization is done. I think that is equally important. And then not only organizing, coordinating, motivating people and controlling. And then understanding the behavior of the people. I think in business enterprises, that is what they do. If we really look at some of the leading industrialists of the world, we find their behavior was something different from and, and, and something very motivating in nature. They try to control, not only try to generate resources, but they try to create a, a situation where they have developed a social status for, for themselves. I think uh, business education is something so important. There is a trend all over the world where people are going for business education. There are over 900 universities in India. Almost every university has courses in business education. There are equal, almost the same number of universities 
in united states of america and other countries of the world a large number of universities all of most of them are offering business education there is a trend all over the world to go for education people young children young people their parents and relations motivate young people to join and and study business education primarily because they are interested that they become successful in life they become very happy in life and they also generate riches for them enrich themselves and become wealthy the salaries which are paid to corporate executives i think clear indication the facilities which are given to them the perks which are given to them and the benefits which they draw from companies clearly indicate or indicate and motivate people to join business education sometimes the salaries run into billions of dollars and they really feel very comfortable at the end when that they have studied business education in their schools or colleges i remember about one instance when some question was asked to some graduates of wharton school of business pennsylvania university that what is the difference between you and people passing out from harvard university the candidate replied well it is because we within 2 to 3 years 2 to 5 years we become entrepreneurs we become ceos we start our own enterprises we become rich we become satisfied and we generate wealth and at the same time we contribute directly to the prosperity of the nation on the other hand the harvard people they join services they also rise to ceos position they do make contributions they become wealthy also they draw very fat salary but most of them do not take up entrepreneurship they do not start organizations they continue to be in services for a longer time now i think there is a little difference between the two of them one when you start an enterprise in four years five years or seven years time then you are not only earning money for yourself but you are generating employment you are creating an opportunity for people to work earn money and also become rich and that also is a kind of service to the nation i think business education provides that type of opportunity where people can not only work and generate wealth for themselves but they can also become successful entrepreneurs and 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 spread their wings employ higher people and and develop i think it is necessary that everybody wants personal growth organizations want organizational growth and at the same time organizations also want maximization of wealth maximization of profit maximization of the market value of their share or stock now that is something which they desire from all their human resource or employees or skilled workers there has been a force at one time where the productivity was one of the most important consideration for most the employers or organizations but it is probably no longer the productivity productivity must get converted into profit generating wealth expanding growth of an organization with growth of an organization comes the growth of an individual who is working for that organization it can't be just that it would be contributing to the growth of organization but it would be contributing to his own personal growth as well now if we really see business education is one area which is very well diversified if you go to sciences say going for physics or going for chemistry or going for botany or biology or any other such field they are concentrate and go deep into that particular field business education on the other hand is diversified in nature when i say diversified in nature 
it encompasses the study of subjects like accounting statistics computers and encompasses the study of finance investment banking insurance management information systems organization behavior the behavior of the people how to motivate how to coordinate organize it also facilitates learning various business techniques both which is given in the textbooks and which is also given in the research papers and articles and also this man in one's own country and rest of the world the world probably the whole sky is covered because what is important for us is to really educate them so well and then lately it has also been found that education has become quite important because business education has become very important even if one is a physicist even if one is an engineer even if one is a chemist or a scientist and one starts an enterprise or even in organizations where he is working say in a specific organization he has to take care of the costs the equipments which are being developed the scientific discovery is being made there is a requirement of making investment the return on such investment there is a requirement as to what would be the cost construction of the building is one aspect construction of the building effectively cost effectively is something very important and how can it be used in such a way that really finance is very important where do you get funds how do we use them how do we allocate them and even after we earn how do we maximize profit how do we earn all that i think something which is been taught in business education of course there are lots of technological changes which are taking place the world is changing very very fast it is changing so fast i think able to even keep most of the people are able to keep pace those who do not keep pace with the changing world will find it difficult to survive it is necessary to be competitive with the rest of the world in developed world in other countries we are who are changing fast i think that's something which is probably important i remember way back in 65 or 60s there used to be a large computer of computer ibm used to produce 64k byte computer which were probably installed in a room something around 20 by 60 meters with air conditioners fitted there and the total performance of it was 64k bytes today even a mobile has much more capacity to calculate what to talk of supercomputers which all over the world there are i think this technology upgradation is something which is very important and that one learns not from what one's forefathers have been doing what one's father has been doing what one's brother has been doing but probably what has been done and taught in by, by through the technology in business education it gives a good overview and also understanding the the main aspect is finding out alternatives alternatives for investment alternative for products alternative for innovations alternatives for creativity and all that is possible only if one's mind is open through business education he thinks and says well this alternative is better than the other alternative and he tries to experiment that then he can not only do it he doesn't need to do experiment himself he can also learn from the experiments of all others in the rest of the world as to what could be the best way of increasing productivity maximize profit now 
this is something which is very important. Let us look at another aspect. We know Kodak films. It ruled the world. Everybody was after that. Kodak cameras, I think they're out of the market. No longer, they, they do, do not long, no longer exist. Because they did not adjust, because your, your mobile phone provides all those facilities which a Kodak camera would provide. Russians are very good in terms of producing excellent cameras. Japanese produce excellent cameras. They are all out. Video cassette recorders. There was a, in 80s, there was a lot of competition between Sony and National to produce VCRs, video cassette recorders. And each one of them tried to claim that their film, the, 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 the film appearance or presence was far, far better than National. And, but National was occupying larger market. But both of them are out now. I don't think that anybody, except those who have uh, as antique available with them, the video cassette recorders is using video cassette recorders. The technology has changed with computers and with CDs and DVDs. I think the video cassette recorders are out. And therefore, that technology advancement, if one is able to determine the trend, probably it is needed. Similarly, there was a time when Remington typewriter and Olivetti typewriters was probably considered to be most appropriate in most of the offices. Now, I think there are very few offices which use these typewriters. Why? Because computers give you much, far, far more facilities and much cheaper. It helps you on the screen to make necessary corrections. While in case of typewriters, even electronic typewriters, probably out of business. I think what is necessary, the business education facilitates and help develop a training of mind, learning as to how advances are taking place in different kinds of fields in the world. Agriculture, for instance, arms and ammunition, these technological changes which are taking place. And the whole purpose is to reduce the costs, cost as much as possible so that it becomes cost effective, it becomes more efficient and it becomes more effective in nature. I think what business education facilitates that. Coming to another aspect is that it helps equip one's brain with financial intelligence, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and data technology. Now, all that is possible only what is in the business education. People have understood and people are trying to do this. And I'm glad that this is done. Because it helps business education broadens the horizons and enriches one's life the union of technology, the data technology, and money really helps facili or facilitates. Take any field in the life, including one's own personal life. One finds business education facilitates in a great way. Let us look at some of the areas. Accounting is one area we probably may think that it is just debit and credit. It is not so. It is, the, it is an information system. It is something which facilitates decision making for the CEOs. Irrespective of what field one is drawn or one is coming from, one has to be, when he becomes CEOs of an organization, to sign the balance sheet of a company. If he doesn't know accounting and he doesn't know about the information system which the accounting generates, I think he may be probably totally dependent on his CFO or other personnel in the organization. Now that probably can be, it is necessary for to, him to learn. They're all over the world. There are courses like finance for non-finance activities which are being run. The inputs, 
with regard to accounting, cost benefit analysis, analysis and interpretation of the balance sheet and income statement, and then how this information can be used for the purposes of decision making is done. How feedback can be obtained, how variances can be developed, how cost benefit analysis can be calculated, how much turnover should be there. I think these are some of the aspects. Then alternative decision making, selection of a project. I think this is all something very important, of course, as we know, which is much less now, but it has used to be at one stage very high strike rate where workers used to go on strike. The strike, how do you really control that? How do we help workers and bring them to the table to discuss about issues? I think that were the issues where human resource management is very important. How do you satisfy them? How do you really take them forward? How do you motivate them? 1905, I think Frederick F. Taylor came out a book called Scientific Management. I think it's popular, quite popular. The world. Foyle, Henry Foyle, also around the same time from Germany, wrote a book on principles of management. These two becomes, books became important almost in most of the business schools and they are being used and taught. Now, the first one, scientific management by Frederick Taylor, concentrated on productivity. He identified what movements of people or hands etc. will produce better results. That means they were converted into a kind of human were converted into a kind of robots. Produce maximum what you can do. How do you utilize the maximum productivity out of labor? I think that was the basis of that. On the other hand, while Henry Foyal probably talked about various principles and directions, what management need to do? I think though both of them are equally important, but today the things have changed altogether. Look at the accounting. There are various software which are available. Use those software, enter data, and you will get the results. Of course, there is one danger. The danger is gigo in, gigo. Garbage in, garbage out. How do you insert that data in, or put that data in is very important as a matter of fact. Therefore, but for that process, which used to be there, maintain manual accounts is no longer required in most of the organizations. And particularly, it is not even easy when you have operations, say, in 30 countries, and you have to assemble and collate all the data from almost all over the world where the, there are foreign exchange implications as well, and convert that into this. I remember one small instance. In a New York bank, there was a gentleman who was working. He was working in the foreign exchange department of New York bank. He found, came across a difficulty. The difficulty was when foreign exchange is converted into dollars, bond for being exchange received from different parts of the world. That was we converted into dollar. He faced the problem was how do you handle the fractions? Say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of conversion. He continued thinking about it. Then he created a dummy account and transferred all that fractional amount into that account. And that account became so large. And the bank did not know because the bank did not lose anything. They got as per what the exchange rate determined. And then he started withdrawing that money and started using it. His neighbors learned about it. That he is really becoming certainly rich, buying good cars, lifestyle has changed, and so on and so forth. Some of them even reported to the bank, and it was ultimately found it was this money which he was using. Now, such cases are important. That is possible only if one can learn from experiences of others. Now, I think uh, there is a lot of 
growth has taken place. Change the take of financial management, finance technology. The methods, the procedures, the techniques, ranging from the old payback period for investment decisions to NPV to IRR, and then to profitability index. These are generally given in most of the European books, and most of the people have adopted these techniques. They are outdated. They have become almost. I think uh, out of date. No company postulates single objective. Even an individual does not pursue a single objective. There are multiple goals which are pursued simultaneously, and these multiple goals have priorities. All of them are not of the equal priority. Now, in such circumstances, these techniques, which have been developed over the years, do not provide a proper solution to this. Although even computers, calculators like Casio's, software, they only talk about one objective: maximization of profit, or work out the internal rate of return, or work out the what is the absolute figure of profit being earned. As a matter of fact, how do we account for? Multiple objectives. I developed the gold program, which can take into account several multiple goals. You one can assign priority to them, and then one can try find out a solution for each one of these goals, and pick up a project which meets his objective. Take the case of an individual. That individual. Has objective. If he go, he is coming for business education. Maybe he has an objective to learn business education and become an entrepreneur, or to take up the job in a company, or to earn a degree with a prestigious university like your university. Now, and to develop a proper network with professors and also with colleagues, friends. Now these may be different objectives. Some of them may might be so rich they may not think of having a business education as such, but may be interested to have business education because they want to spend two years or three years or four years or five years, and then after having the graduate undergraduate degree from home country to go to Harvard or go to Stanford or go to Columbia or to go to Wharton and so on and so forth. I think uh, objectives are different. Now, how can one really say that one's objective is only to take up to take up a job, and then his priorities may be different for each one of them? These priorities can be based upon ordinal ranking. I also developed a model for ordinal ranking. Now, these advances which have taken place in the field of finance, in the case of investment decisions. Probably can help one to understand and use them in day-to-day -day business enterprise. Similarly, take the case of stock market. There are so many theories which have come. Robert Merton has developed some. Harry Warcourt, which also talked about the portfolio analysis and talked about approach. Similarly, Egon Fama developed a different kind of approach, and those approaches or those theories can be used by somebody who is interested to make investment in the stock market. Wants to go to a business enterprise or a finance, financial services company, then probably all these theories will help him in terms of understanding and taking decisions to enrich oneself by generating wealth. By earning more profit, by 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 indulging in, I think these are some of the things. Similarly, take the case of dividend distribution. There are theories which are available in the area of finance. I think those theories, sharp ones, ones in brain. Franco Modigliani's and Merton's MM theory probably facilitates one to understand if. How much to distribute and how much not to distribute, and how does it affect the market value of share, or how it does not affect the market value of share? The traditional theory has one, 
Amir theory has another opinion. Study of those theories facilitate one's mind and business education talks about it. And then one's decision making will be based upon a scientific analysis of various theories which have been developed over the years all over the world. There is no boundary in terms of research. I know Dr. Durukan, I understand, has been awarded for her research contributions and, and by Indian Institute of Finance. Her work, which has been analyzed by a jury here at Indian Institute of Finance, has been highlighted and, and complimented by, by the members of the jury and also by the institute. I think that research which is being done in one country is no longer the total control of a university or a country. It can be used anywhere in the world and by anyone because it is a published work and it goes around the world. The research journals, they are read, they are studied, they are analyzed, they are adopted and extensions are suggested by various scholars and research scholars. <coughs> I think this is something can be provided only by business education. <coughs> As I said, the world is changing very fast. I gave you some examples. <coughs> when we say this is changing fast, I gave you some examples. Zero inventory in Japan probably clearly indicates how much is required. Now, if one says, how do you upgrade yourself technologically? Only business education can provide you. If you see technogress, how it is shaped, then you need to really make maybe in a fixed time, maybe a man may be released. We read in newspapers, driverless trains and driverless cars. I think the man will be replaced by that. We know a pandemic has made it compulsory for almost most of us to work from home, almost for five to six months. Now, this is a new trend. You, don't need, you are not going to office, you're working from home. Therefore, what is your equipment? a laptop, a computer, a desktop, and not doing that. Probably nobody conceived, even if one is working in one's office on laptop or on computer, that he would be working at home. There may be small spaces at home for most of them, but they have tried to create a small office within home. I think there is a change. Pandemic has created that kind of situation. And I think some of the technologies which are being used now, they are going beyond one's comprehension. And in near future, we will find probably there will be much more. There are, let us look at the way the education is facilitated. There are MBAs, if you really study the profile of some of the CEOs of large multinational companies having a spread not only within all different countries of the world, I think what we find that MBAs have scored over other professionals. That means business education is so important. The salary is paid to them. I have seen, I was teaching at IIT Delhi. Indian Institute of Math Technology Delhi. During my tenure, as far back as 80s, 82, 83, etc., I found people were students who were doing engineering were interested to go for MPA. I used to ask them why you have done engineering, you should be a first class engineer, you have studied in one of the best institutions in the country and have made a mark around the world. They said, sir, as an engineer, I have a particular level by which I would reach. But with MBA, I would become and reach the top 
the COO or CEO or the president of a company. I can also start something of my own. And when I start something of my own, I'll be able to become generate employment for the people. I was quite satisfied with their answer and they were going for MBA. See, the MBA is one of the deans of recently appointed as dean of Harvard University from India. The MBA from India has been appointed as a dean of Harvard Business School recently. Earlier also, there was an Indian who was a dean in the Harvard Business School. We know about, if you really see, there are several of them become CEOs with management education, many of them with finance qualifications. Take the case of finance minister, Mr. Rishi Sonak, his MBA, and he is now finance minister of United Kingdom. He's become politician, minister. There are several, even in India and other places where they are holding ministerial positions after finishing the MBA. I think this provides great opportunity to people to do MBA because the diversified area in which they edu are educated is, is something very, very important for, for, for a candidate who pursues MBA. Now the question is, it's not one. The many people, one of the largest bank in India, State Bank of India, the person who is taken over as the chairman of that bank is an MBA from Delhi University. Now that probably holds a, a, an important position for business education anywhere in the world. At the same time, it is anybody's desire to work for international agencies. When I say international agencies, it could be World Bank. It could be International Monetary Fund. It could be Asian Development Bank. It could be African Development Bank and United Nations Industrial Development Organization. It could be WHO. I think one, it, one looks for working in any one of, of these organizations because the earnings from each one of these international organizations is free from tax. You save anywhere to about 25 to 30 percent you are supposed to pay as taxes on all your earnings and incomes. They are free from taxes. Now, I think it could be business education and particularly finance education may provide opportunity to somebody to have an opportunity to get to work in the World Bank. IMF, PDB, African Development Bank, UNIDO, and WHO. Now, if one gets that opportunity, one is lucky. But that is possible only if one has a business education. Every organization, almost every ministry, in my opinion, have a, has a financial advisor. Every organization has a CFO, and he carries a lot of value in the organization. His words, his advice, his suggestions are seriously taken by a CEO of organization and also by the board of management because it is he who has the control over finances and he's the best person to be able to advise. Now that comes only if one has finance qualification or accounting qualification and also probably has an MBA degree. Now, taking into consideration all these things, one needs to really have a little bit of understanding. Anybody who is doing MBA, even the course curriculum is changing at a very fast pace. Most of the course, course curriculums now are talking about values, ethics, and environment management. Because, in my opinion, the world needs to be a continuity in continuity. World has to continue for centuries to come. 
and for that it is necessary that a proper environment is maintained pollution is controlled which probably affects the health of the people as well and then that would be only i think the most of the institutions have started doing this they have started introducing including in the course curriculum the latest technology computer based decision making machine learning blockchain technology artificial intelligence and of course but all that requires machine alone cannot do everything it is probably a wrong feeling that machine will do everything no machine can do only what a human being wants human brain brain is still supreme over and above a machine it is even with a super fast computer who is doing it who is managing it the human brain who developed the super computer who is going to manage that who is going to manage the missiles who is going to manage the space aircraft it is a human being but for that what is necessary is to have skill that skill is not only scientific every scientist all over the world ultimately the best of the scientists all over the world are appointed as the head of the organization in which they are working which is a scientific organization in their own country now when they become head you may call it by the name director director general you may call it by the name secretary you may call it by the name whatever name you might say director general now you need the management training because you need to manage an organization with maybe 4 million people 5 million people 500 people 1000 people and so on and so forth and there may be issues which might come before you even in a scientific organization and therefore you need good qualification i remember way back in 97 98 it was made compulsory in india for all medical superintendents to have an exposure of 6 weeks in management education i remember to have given inputs in the area of financial management to them and they were amazed they said they we never thought along those lines they were superb doctors they were almost like leading a team of hundreds of superb doctors and they were given this training i remember also once we floated a program for deans and directors of engineering colleges imparting them education the leadership and management education the program was held in kashmir at regional engineering college i was the one who was coordinating and we tried to give them inputs with regard to business education and they were amazed some of them said we managing our college or university engineering department and faculty of engineering they we have got some new inputs new tech new technology newer methods to manage thing within our own faculty i was really very glad to hear their opinion about it what i am trying to say management education is something which is essential and very important now i must say at the same time that all managers must pursue values must pursue ethics one small mistake can really be very very serious and can damage one's reputation dignity and reputation once gone it is difficult to get back because that is something which is if once lost is lost forever it is difficult to recover it and i think <coughs> from that point of view it is necessary to pursue your profession to pursue the job which one is handling <coughs> to with values and with ethics <coughs> i think these are some of the things which i have been included i remember a few years back one of the business schools introduced <coughs> ethics as one of the papers 
and there were some students who got as high as marks as 90 95 some who got less than 45 or 50 when the employers were hiring them they did not pick up those whose marks were less than 50 in that paper they also did not hire those whose marks were higher than 90 surprising they say they are too ethical and therefore they may not have flexibility in terms of decision making we want people to have flexibility in decision making <coughs> i think i probably quite concur with those employers but at the same time it is something good for the students and also the faculty to pursue ethics right values take care of the environment and ecology aid oneself to the latest technology understand what are the trends taking place not only study from the books there is a long time when the research goes to books the time is something around 20 to 30 years gap as a french scientist talked about in 1922 23 robots talked about robots 881 that was converted into application now if one is able to teach from researches which are being done in that country and also in other parts of the country world that probably would be the latest trends and teachings and advances being taught to the students and i think that is something very essential textbooks are basic but the advances in research are essential to study what is likely to be tomorrow or day after and so on and so forth i feel business education is essential even those who are not able to join it on full time basis even for executives working in the company like engineers doctors in medical hospitals and medical centers architects and any other profession scientists any other professional i think if not a full time 3 years course or 2 years mba a short course in business management and business education is something important for them to understand to un- and and apply in their own businesses to sharpen and make their own decision making more effective ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> we must compliment dr banu dutton for organizing this academic lecture i also feel thankful to the dean and also to dutton for inviting me to deliver this lecture i also thank those who are participating in this academic lecture i wish all of the people whether it is faculty researchers or students or even participants from all over different part of the world i wish them a grand success in life i wish that with using business education applications of business education they become successful in life they attain happiness they and great wealth both for themselves for their families and for the nation their nation they also attain a social status thank you very much dr banu durukan thank you professor agarwal um, thank you very much yes Uh, it, it has been a great pleasure listening to you. You have underlined uh, quite a lot of good points, and I hope the, uh, the participants have greatly benefited from your lecture. And we hope that we can also uh, have, host you here in person in Izmir after the pandemic is over. Thank you very much. <laughs>